The fourth episode of Loki season 2 revolved around Mobius, B-15, Sylvie, and the titular god of mischief trying to fix the destruction of the temporal loom with the help of Victor Timely. It involved getting Timely's temporal aura, which would open the blast doors that would give them access to the loom, and then increase the capacity of the loom so that it could accommodate all the branching time-based information that was trying to turn into physical time. Renslayer, Miss Minutes, and X-5 kidnapped Timely to save the TVA and fix the temporal loom. As far as I could deduce, after learning that he who remains betrayed Renslayer by erasing everybody's memories, Minutes and Renslayer wanted to kill Timely in every version of Kong because they thought that he wasn't integral to the survival of the multiverse. But they didn't kill him off instantly and sat him down in a room to learn about the temporal loom. Loki and Sylvie pruned Renslayer, returned Minutes back to her factory settings, left Brad in a state of utter confusion, and rescued Timely. However, all that amounted to nothing because when Timely tried to go out into space to fix the loom, it killed him and then exploded, thereby seemingly killing everyone else in the multiverse, or at least in the TVA. Episode 5 of Loki Season 2 opens with him standing in the control room for the temporal loom. No, everything isn't destroyed yet. The loom is still unfolding. That said, nobody is in the room, except for Loki. He walks through the empty corridors of the TVA, and when he gets to the holding cell, he time slips, thereby proving that the explosion has brought back his dysfunction. It means that, at some point in time, the explosion has happened and wiped off everything, but Loki has managed to go back in time, to a point that is still unaffected by the effects of the explosion. However, given the widespread impact of the explosion of the loom, every time period begins to turn into threads, thereby limiting Loki's avenues, as in, there aren't enough time periods for him to slip into and stay alive. If all of the time is gone, then there'll be nothing for him to go to when he time slips. The narrative shifts to a branch timeline in San Francisco in 1962, where Casey is escaping from Alcatraz with two other guys, played by the creators of the second season of Loki, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead. Loki interrupts their escape and does that thing again, where he assumes that Casey will recognize him. I mean, Loki is slipping through time and meeting people who haven't met him yet. He has done that before, in the first episode of the show. Why is it so hard for him to grasp that he is meeting versions of his friends who can't possibly know who he is? He nearly does that with B-15 too, who lives in a branch timeline in New York in 2012, but he doesn't stay there long enough to pester her. Loki does go to Ohio in 2022 and tries to explain everything that has happened to a clueless Mobius, who is a dad and sells jet skis. The only person who kind of gets what he is saying is OB, who lives in Pasadena in 1994 as a PhD holder in theoretical physics and an author of sci-fi novels. OB basically says what we all know, Loki's time slipping isn't random. He is going to specific points and places in time where his friends exist. So, he has to learn how to control it. OB tells Loki that he needs to get all the people who were in the room during the temporal loom explosion together again. Apparently, their temporal aura will match the temporal aura of that control room, and that will allow them to go back to that point in time with the help of temp pads and fix the loom. However, they don't have any temp pads. So, Loki hands over a copy of the TVA guidebook to OB and hopes that he'll learn everything that he needs to learn from it and build a temp pad. Loki time slips to the timeline that Mobius exists in and does that thing again, where he tries to explain who he is even though he knows that Mobius won't understand a word that Loki is saying. OB builds the temp pad, and they show Mobius how time travel works. Loki convinces Mobius that if he doesn't come away with him, then there'll be nothing left to save. He does the same with Casey and B-15. After that, he goes for Sylvie, and he assumes that she isn't going to remember him because everyone else's lives got reset. Sylvie didn't get reset because she is a variant of Loki, and she is just chilling in the timeline that she loves. She argues that the resetting of time is a good thing because the aforementioned characters get to live a normal life where they can make normal or abnormal choices, things they couldn't do because they were ripped from their lives and shoved into the TVA. Loki talks about killing Kong, saving everything in existence, and battling his loneliness. Sylvie says that none of that matters and that he should let his friends live the lives that they want to live. So, Loki returns to Obi's office, apparently with the intention of sending everyone back to their lives. Sylvie goes to her favorite record shop and listens to the Velvet Underground song as she watches her timeline break down into threads. The phenomenon doesn't instantly affect her, physically speaking, and she slips out of there with the help of her temp pad because her timeline has become an empty void. 
At the end of Loki Season 2, Episode 5, a dejected Lofison says that he is wrong for forcing Mobius, B-15, O.B., and Casey to go on a journey that only he wants to go on. He says that all of them should live the lives that they want to live. That said, when Sylvie enters the office and tells Loki she's wrong and that his friends won't have anything to go back to if they don't fix the temporal loom, Loki realizes that they finally have the temporal aura of the control room of the loom. Now, they can go back to the point in time before the loom exploded and try to fix it again. However, for some reason, Loki and Obi start accusing Casey of stealing the tempad, even though it's a massive computer-like thing. Maybe it's the show's way of padding the runtime before turning everyone into threats. Loki tries to hold on to them, but they slip through his fingers. This time, even Sylvie doesn't survive. That prompts Loki to use his time slipping to go back in time. He lands back in the room with everyone intact. He says that he needs to do that again, except this time, he has to pick the temporal loom control room as his desired location. By the looks of it, he successfully does that, and he goes to the point in time where Timely walked through the blast doors and got obliterated. Episode 6 of the second season of Loki opens with Loki returning to the moment when Victor Timely stepped out of the blast doors of the TVA to fix the temporal loom and disintegrate it. He realizes that they have to do things faster this time around. But that doesn't work, and every time Timely disintegrates, Loki brings things back to square one because he can slip through time and redo an event for as long as he likes. When Loki sees that doing things quickly isn't the solution, he tries to do it earlier. As in, he redo the events of this season of the show, but instead of wasting time on pleasantries and introductions, he gets straight to the chase. He explains the mission to fix the temporal loom for the umpteenth and repeats the aforementioned loop for centuries so that his knowledge of physics rivals that of OB and Timeless. Sadly, even that doesn't work, and the temporal loom explodes again. Timely says that the machine is unable to process an infinite number of timelines into the sacred timeline. No matter how much they increase the loom's processing power, it's never going to accommodate infinite timelines. Sylvie remarks that this is a result of freeing of the timeline by killing he who remains, and if there's a way to stop that from happening, they should try to do that. If the timelines never branch out exponentially, the temporal loom won't overload, and everything will be fine again, theoretically speaking. But the issue with that option is that if they don't free the timeline, they have to occupy he who remains throne and rule over the sacred timeline. I mean, that's the choice that he who remains gave to Loki and Sylvie at the end of season 1. Given how desperate Loki is, he chooses to go back to their first altercation with he who remains, in the hopes of convincing Sylvie not to kill him. Loki realizes he has to replace the temporal loom with something better. Much like his attempts at speedrunning through the process of fixing the temporal loom, Loki starts his process of convincing Sylvie to not kill he who remains. After God knows how many times, Loki asks he who remains why he never tries to stop Sylvie from killing him, and surprisingly enough, he who remains pauses Sylvie because he can apparently do that with his tempad. He even turns her invisible so that his conversation with Loki can really seem private. He who remains, as usual, says that Loki's time slipping and him figuring out how to reach the point where he is standing currently has been orchestrated by him. It's such an insulting thing to say. Loki has put so much time and energy into making himself who he is, and this douchebag shows up to make it look like it is all part of his grand scheme. That said, Loki does surprise him by showing that he was feigning ignorance all this while. He has had this very conversation with he who remains multiple times, actually. Why? Well, maybe he wants to see if he who remains gives away a piece of information that can actually fix the issue with the temporal loom and bring things back to normal. Sadly, that's not the case. The conundrum is still the same, break the loom to truly free the timeline and risk a multiversal war, or prune the timelines to keep the loom functional and rule it through the TVA. Loki says that he is going to come up with a third option. He says that he is going to find another way. On that note, he goes back to his first meeting with Mobius to learn about the burden of pruning. In one of the most poignant moments in the MCU, Mobius says that, glorious purpose, and, burden, don't go hand in hand. They are actually antithetical to each other. Every choice comes with its own brand of misery, and the one who avoids it all ends up being miserable as hell. It's all about choosing the burden that one can bear and living with it. Loki understands what Mobius is talking about. Hopefully, the audience understands what he's talking about. The dynamic duo shakes hands, and Loki goes back to the moment in Obi's office before everything turns into threats. Even though Loki knows what he has to do, 
He has one last conversation with Sylvie regarding whether or not he should destroy the temporal loom. He understands that Sylvie won't refrain from killing he who remains. She won't rule over the timeline from the TVA or let anyone rule over the timeline through the TVA because she believes that that is tyranny. The only thing she wants is free will and the destruction of everything that opposes free will. On that note, Loki returns to the moment where Timely is supposed to fix the temporal loom. Instead of letting him go out there, Loki steps onto the gangway, that too without a suit. As his formal clothes rip away due to the radiation from the loom, his new suit, complete with a golden black pair of horns, is revealed. He destroys the temporal loom. That causes all the timelines to start withering away. So, he grabs hold of all the threads of the timelines and opens a portal to the end of time. The castle has completely disintegrated, and all that's left of it is the throne. Loki approaches it with all the timelines in his hand, takes his seat on the throne, and regenerates the threads with his powers. As the camera pulls back, it's revealed that Loki has replaced the temporal loom with something that represents the Norse tree of life, Yggdrasil. It's like he is using his childhood teachings to solve a multifaceted problem. The kicker is that he has to bear the burden of keeping this tree intact for the rest of eternity. Loki has expressed his fear of being alone. He has boasted about being a god. And he has always wanted a throne. Now, he has all of that, and it's bittersweet. During Loki's season 2 ending, we see that the TVA is in order, and instead of the temporal loom, they are working towards preserving the temporal tree. The whole vibe of the place has changed. Everyone is talking much more positively, and they appear to be more productive and not mechanical. Mobius reveals that Ant-Man has dealt with a variant of Kong, and everyone remains oblivious to the existence of the TVA. B-15 goes to the war room to go over their plans on how to keep the new sacred timeline intact. Miss Minutes is operational again, but she's probably not as dangerous as she used to be. OB publishes a new TVA handbook. We get a glimpse of a young Victor Timely, but he doesn't get the handbook, thereby preventing him from becoming a variant of Khan. Renslayer wakes up in the dumping ground ruled by Aliath and I hope she doesn't find a way to get out of there. Mobius leaves the TVA and visits one of his variants who is living with his family. Sylvie comes to meet him. They reminisce about Loki. Mobius asks what Sylvie is going to do next, and she doesn't give a straight answer. Sylvie asks Mobius the same question, and he says that he is going to take his time to experience time. The episode ends with a teary-eyed Loki looking off into the distance. And given how beautiful this is, I want it to stay that way.